Hello and welcome to everybody. What we're going to be doing in section 9.3 is we're going to be learning reflections and how you reflect a polygon, or really, we're going to talk about individual points at the beginning, but how you reflect any kind of figure in a line. And there are two things that we're going to focus on in this video, and we'll have a couple of videos for this section. The first is that you're going to learn properties for reflecting points in a line. And then the second thing is that you're going to be reflecting figures in a horizontal and a vertical line in the coordinate plane. Most of the actual problems that you're going to be assigned and quiz assessed on are going to be you reflecting figures in a coordinate plane. All right, so let's get right to what a reflection is and properties associated with a reflection. And I think you know what a reflection is. It's whenever you find the mirror image of a point in a line, essentially. And that's what we're going to be doing here. Now, with reflections, you have to have a mirror, so to speak, a line of reflection. And so what I've got here, a couple of things. We're going to reflect this segment PQ, and we're going to reflect it in this line M. That's going to be the line of reflection. All right. Now, when you reflect a point in a line, there is one of two things that you've got to consider. First of all, you've got to consider whether the point is or is not on the line of reflection. So, for instance, point P is not on line M, our line of reflection, and point Q is on line M, the line of reflection. And here's the basic principle behind a reflection. Whenever you reflect a point in a line, its image is going to be exactly the same distance away from the line of reflection on the opposite side. So however far it is from P to the line of reflection, the image of P will be that same distance on the opposite side of the line. Now I'm going to draw the image of point P to illustrate that. All right, now for right now, I'm going to ask you to just visualize. Um, you can imagine here how P is the exact same distance from line M as its image is. And now I'm going to help you so you don't necessarily have to just visualize that. You can see that it's going to be true. Um, whenever you have a point that's not on the line and you reflect it, the properties that I want to discuss have to do with the line segment connecting the point with this image. So I'm going to connect point P with point P prime. And here's where I can really illustrate what's happening. First of all, as said before, the distance from P to the line of reflection is the same as the distance from P prime to the line of reflection. Now, the other thing that's always going to happen is that the segment connecting a point with its image is always going to be perpendicular to the line of reflection. It's always going to form a right angle. So that way it's exactly on the opposite side of the line. It's not somewhere kind of to this side or to that side or so forth. All right. Now, the way I'm going to state the property associated with this then is that for any point that's not on the line, the line of reflection M, such as point P, the line of reflection ends up being the perpendicular bisector of the segment connecting the point with its image. So here in this case, we could say that line M is the perpendicular bisector of segment P P prime. And that's going to happen every time you reflect a point not on a line in a line of reflection. That's the relationship between it and its image. Now what about for points that are actually on the line of reflection such as point Q? Well the same thing is true except that if I want to make the image of Q the same distance from the line of reflection as point Q itself is, then I have to make its image exactly in the same place because Q is on the line of reflection. There's no distance between it and the line of reflection. Its image is exactly in the same place. All right, so there you go. Both point Q and its image are exactly in the same location because they were on the line of reflection, which is most concisely stated using this diagram to just say that point Q and point Q prime are equal with one another, exactly the same thing. All right, now we were reflecting a line segment, and I'll go ahead and finish drawing that segment then. And I think you can see the symmetry there. You can see that the reflection worked. Great. So now you understand a couple of properties associated with reflections of points in a line or segments in a line, that kind of thing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on our coordinate plane problems, and we're going to do a couple of very simple things in this video. We'll 
we'll do some other simple things in the next video, but it will be slightly different than this. Um, what I want to focus on here, as I said in the goals, is reflecting in horizontal lines and vertical lines. Then the next video, what I was referring to, is we'll learn to re do reflections in special lines, specifically the axes and the lines y equals x and y equals the opposite of x. But let's focus on the horizontal lines. And the first thing that I need to remind you about reflections in horizontal lines is what the equation of a horizontal line looks like. Because you're going to be given the equation of your line of reflection and then expected to do the reflection. The equation of a horizontal line always comes in the form y equals k. Where k is just any constant value. And you see we have two different lines of reflection that are horizontal here. We have the line y equals negative 1 and the line y equals 3 that are going to serve as lines of reflection in this example. And so you'll see how I graph those momentarily. But they are horizontal because their y equals some kind of constant. All right. The vertices of triangle ABC are represented by the matrix that you see here. We're going to graph the reflection of triangle ABC in the indicated line. Now, I've gone ahead and graphed triangle ABC, but you can see point A had coordinates 3, negative 1, so that's there. Point B had the coordinates negative 2, 0. All right, and then point C had the point coordinates 1, 5. Remember, when representing the coordinates of a polygon in a matrix, you always have the x coordinates in the first row and the y coordinates in the second row, and then this is for point A, for second column is for point B, third column is for point C. Okay. Well, we need to draw our line of reflection in order to make this reflection happen. So let's make that happen right now. Now, to graph the line y equals negative 1, that's going to be the horizontal line whose y-intercept is negative 1. So simply, all we have to do is go ahead and graph that y-intercept to negative 1, and then we can make the horizontal line that passes through that. All right, that's the line y equals 1. Negative 1, excuse me. Now for the reflections. Basically, here's all we've got to do. We've got to figure out how far each of these points A, B, and C are from the line of reflection, and we have to, re to reflect them that same distance on the opposite side of the line of reflection. Now let's start with point A. Here's a case where the point that we're reflecting is actually on the line of reflection. And so you know from our discussion so far that that means its image is going to be exactly in the same place. So we can go ahead and graph A prime right there. Now for point B, you can see that point B is one unit above the line of reflection. So its image B prime is going to be one unit below the line of reflection. Then point C is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six units above the line of reflection. And so its image will be six units below. One, two, three, four, five, six. Barely fits on the screen right there. Now we'll just connect those three points, and voila, we've got the image of triangle ABC after we reflected in the line y equals 1. You can see that this line is a line of symmetry for those two figures, right? Compared to one another anyway. Now, I don't recommend drawing what I'm going to draw right now. I'm just trying to reinforce the properties of reflections that I taught you a moment ago. Um, we already said that the point A and A prime were equal because they were on, A was on the line of reflection. Now, if I were to connect B with B prime, can you see how that line was, the line of reflection was the perpendicular bisector of that segment? And then if I were to connect C with C prime, again, our line of reflection was the perpendicular bisector of the se segment connecting that point with its image. All right, looks complicated again if you draw that, but just pay attention to the blue and the, the black and the red triangles. Those are the relevant things in that picture right there. Okay, now we're going to reflect on the line y equals 3. And so we're going to want to draw a horizontal line whose y-intercept is 3. Let's graph the y-intercept right there, and then draw the horizontal line that passes through it. Right there. Okay, and then uh, we're going to follow the same process we did before. None of the three vertices are located on the line of reflection. That's fine. So we're just going to have to figure out how far each is and reflect it on the other side. So let's start with A, which is four units below the line of reflection. So its image will be four units above the line of reflection. Then B is three units below the line of reflection, so its image will be three units above. 
and point C was two units above the line of reflection, so its image will be two units below the line of reflection. Like so. All right, there you go. So always make sure you reflect points on the opposite side of the line of reflection from where they started. The vertices of the triangle didn't all have to be on one side of the line of reflection because the original triangle's vertices were not like that. All right, now for reflections in vertical lines, and then we'll be done. Same triangle, all right? You see the same vertex right there, but now we're reflecting in vertical lines, and you can see that these are vertical lines because instead of y equals a constant value, we have equations that form x equals a constant value. And indeed, the equation of a vertical line is always going to be found in the form x equals k, where k is some kind of constant. Now, as we did before, we're going to be graphing the line of reflection to begin. When you see a, a, a vertical line's equation, what we're trying to do is we're going to graph the vertical line whose x-intercept is this value over here. So, let's find x-intercept of negative 1, graph a vertical line through it. There's that y-intercept, or the x-intercept, excuse me, then let's graph the vertical line. Well, that's not very good. All right, there we go. Shouldn't need quite the amount of explanation this time as you did on the previous examples. It's just that we're working with the left and the right side instead of above and below. Um, we want to find out how far point A is from the line of reflection. It is four units on the right side, and so its image will be four units on the left side. Right there. Point B is one unit to the left of our line of reflection, so its image will be one unit to the right. Right there. And C is two units to the right of the line of reflection, so its image will be two units to the left of the line of reflection right here. All right, now let's connect those three vertices. We've got our reflection. Whoa, that's not very good. Easy, right? All right, see if you can do this one on your own, and then just check your answer with mine. All right, you should have started with the line x equals 1 right here. Reflected A across the line of reflection. Reflected B across the line of reflection at the appropriate distances. And then C stayed in the same place because it was on the line of reflection. And you got your triangle. All right, it's that simple, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you see the next video where we're reflecting the axes and the lines y equals x and y equals the opposite of x. Goodbye.